the consequences of being rotten in science education are very serious. Uh, first of all, there's the question of uh, dwindling economic competitiveness. Industries in which the United States used to be world leader are trickling away to other countries. New industries, cutting edge technologies, are being developed in other countries much more than in the United States. And this has powerful and uh, progressive economic consequences, I mean progressively negative. Uh, economic consequences for the United States. And uh, beyond that, people who understand science are able to influence the future in a way that people who don't understand science uh, can't do. You can elect representatives and influence legislation in a way that you can't do if you don't understand what the issues are. And so many of the issues facing uh, us for the future are connected with science and technology. So where are the failings? You give standardized tests to American kids and kids from lots of other nations, not just Japan and Korea, but uh, Singapore and uh, Canada and England. And, and you find the United States, uh, let's say, uh, junior high school kids, are in the bottom 10% of the world. You find that, uh, that applicants for entry-level jobs at uh, leading American electronics company, 80% of them can't pass a fifth grade mathematics test. So this is extremely serious for reasons uh, of, uh, of our national well-being. Now, the failings are on many levels. So the schools don't have money to buy the laboratory equipment that you, uh, you see uh, missing. Uh, the teachers are not as good as they ought to be. Or take another issue. Almost every newspaper in America has a daily astrology column. Astrology, of course, is, uh, is a hoax. It's fake. It's Bunk. How many of them have even a weekly science column? Take television. Is there any program on television in which the hero is someone dedicated to finding out how the universe works? Where are the role models in science? When's the last time we heard an intelligent comment about science, not medicine, not technology, science, from the President of the United States? When's the last time we heard science discussed on an evening news program? Science, not technology, not medicine. This problem runs all the way through the society and uh, is uh, very worrisome. Of course it can be fixed, but it's going to take money and a change in attitudes to do it. The great thing that is happening in our time is that we are able, through a method which can actually make some progress towards the real universe out there, to find out something about origins, and this is the scientific method applied to the science of cosmology. So I know that's not a direct answer to your question, but I thought it was more important to, uh, to address the issue of uh, feeling unhappy because it wasn't immediately understandable. Well, yes, I find that extremely soothing, actually, because it is a kind of, <laughs> it is a kind of, sort of formidable task of grasping this. It makes me want to retreat into trivial questions like, is this idea of <laughs> predicting backwards going to put astrologers out of business? Nothing will put astrologers out of business. <laughs> well, Alas. <laughs> and on UFOs, I would just say, uh, the I, no one would be happier than me if uh, we were being visited, and it would save me so much trouble. Um, but uh, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and I would say the evidence that we are now or ever have been visited, despite the claims of being abducted and God knows what happens on the spaceship, the, those claims are crummy. The evidence just isn't good, and uh, my mind is open. I'm willing to, to look at new cases, but uh, there has been no compelling cases. Physical evidence, photographs, a stolen logbook of the alien captain, nothing that would convince a skeptic. The system was a lot, uh, a lot more traffic in it than there is now. And a lot of that debris we know from the uh, exploration of Halley's Comet, for example, Comets are very rich in organic matter. So the stuff of life was falling on the Earth. Now, is that the hand of God or not? Well, if you believe in God, God established the, the physical laws of the universe. and Chemistry is a consequence of physics. So all those molecules that led to life were made by, by God. It's possible to believe that. I, I'm not opposed to that idea. But I just say there is no evidence for it. And where there's no evidence, I say keep an open mind. Don't commit yourself in the absence of compelling evidence.
I would have to say the recalcitrance of the United States. Um, it's painful to say. But uh, you look at a set of issues about, uh, about nuclear arms reductions, uh, a comprehensive test ban treaty, which uh, is being discussed at the United Nations today. Dozens of countries all over the world are urging it to be done. Soviet Union says they're for it. Who's against it? The United States. Despite the fact that we have tens of thousands of nuclear weapons, you look at uh, issues of demerving nuclear weapons. That is, uh, right now we have many weapons, uh, the MX, for example, many missiles which have 10 warheads on a single missile at a time of crisis. There's a temptation to preempt. If those guys can destroy 10 of my cities with one of their rockets, let me destroy their rocket before it, it is launched. It's unstable on both sides. The Soviets also are, are murdered up the gazoo. Um, Look at uh, issues of massive cuts in, uh, in the nuclear arsenals, not, not just the start 30%, but 99%. That's where we ought to be looking. Who's the recalcitrant partner? Which nation is the one that's not interested in it at all? It's the United States. I'm very concerned that the United States is stuck in some kind of Cold War freezer and, uh, and hasn't come to grips with the kind of world we're now in. The resources is they, they went into increasing uh, budgets for arms. Isn't that uh, where, the, where, the money, where the money went? That and making rich people richer. Those are the two places. Well, the thing about rich people, and being one, I guess, <laughs> uh, is, is the money all gets reinvested. If you've got money, you put it in a bank. The bank lends it out to uh, people to buy homes or cars but, or whatever. But not poor gets, people. But not poor people. Well, that's a good point. It tends to stay up at that highly stratified, very... More people get employed with capital uh, formation and so forth. Are you a socialist? Uh, I'm not sure what a socialist is, well, but, I I believe that the, but I believe that the government has a responsibility to care for the people. I'm not talking about dole. I'm talking about making people self-reliant, people able to take care of themselves. There are countries which are perfectly able to do that. The United States is an extremely rich country. It's perfectly able to do that. It chooses not to. It chooses to have homeless people. It chooses... It's, we are 19th in the world in infant mortality. 18 other countries save the lives of their babies better than we. How come? They just spend more money on it. They care about their babies more than we care about ours. I think it's a disgrace. And uh, this country has vast wealth. You just look at what something like uh, Star Wars, the money spent on Star Wars, already spent $20 billion on it. If these guys are permitted to go ahead, they will spend a trillion dollars on Star Wars. Think of what that money could be used for to educate, to help, to bring people up to a sense of, of uh, self-confidence, to improve not just the happiness of people in America, but their economic standing, to improve the competitiveness of the United States compared to other countries. We are using money for the wrong stuff. It, it's something like this. You burn fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas. Uh, the world economy runs on that, right? You know? And uh, as a consequence, you put carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The, the carbon in the coal combines with the oxygen of the air and makes carbon dioxide, CO2, releasing energy. That's why we do it. Our technology has now gotten to, to such a, an awesome level that we are able to put so much of this stuff, CO2 and other greenhouse gases, into the atmosphere that we're changing the composition of the air and changing its radiative properties. We're now keeping heat in the temperatures are rising. Nobody knows precisely when it will be that things get a certain level of bad. But uh, what I believe is very clear is that we continue doing things this way and things are going to get very bad. Very bad means temperatures rise, increasing drought in continental interiors, as you say, sea level rising, flooding of coastal areas and islands, and no cutoff. All this continuing indefinitely until one way or another we stop. That's serious. Let me start with Noah. <laughs> um, the story of Noah's Ark is, of course, a story. The, uh, the books of the various uh, great religions, Buddhist, Hindu, Islamic, Jewish, Christian, and many others, uh, are filled with stories. That doesn't mean we are to interpret them literally. And uh, 
there are all sorts of problems with the Noah's Ark uh, story, one of which is kangaroos. How did the kangaroos get to Australia if you literally believe the story of Noah's Ark? So I, I'm, I'm sure you meant that in a, in a light uh, tone, and my response is, is uh, likewise. How to keep kids in school? Well, kids, I believe, are fundamentally very smart. And uh, if they see school being taught by people who themselves are not interested in it, people who cannot do very well at teaching, if what they're being taught has no practical application, then why should they do it? So, for example, there's an awful lot of kids graduating high school who go into entry-level jobs in the service economy, uh, waiting on tables, uh, slinging hash, and so on. Now, do they get more money if they were good in uh, second-year algebra? The answer is no. And uh, they understand that. If there were more jobs that required uh, this kind of education, there would be more kids who would go into that kind of education with, with some enthusiasm. If there were a connection between how well you did in school and how fast your salary increased later, as there is in many countries, uh, kids would be much more interested. The viewers of this program do to make a difference in correcting these problems. They can make sure that candidates who don't understand and aren't deeply committed to ending and reversing the nuclear arms race, to stopping greenhouse warming, and to uh, stopping the depletion of the ozonosphere, that those guys aren't, men and women, are not elected. It's not enough to have a candidate say, I'm an environmentalist. In what way are you an environmentalist, Mr. or Ms. Candidate? Take a look at the, the most recent election. Uh, there we had a candidate who uh, said that he was an environmentalist. He, in contrast to the previous eight years, where we had an uncompromising anti-environmentalist in the White House, okay, now there's a president, Mr. Bush, who at least acknowledges that there's a problem. We didn't even know that from, from listening to Mr. Reagan. But if you look at Mr. Bush's budget, we see not a hint of any real commitment to the environment. So I, I say, in a democracy, that's, that's the most important thing a person can do. There are a lot of other things a person can do. You can plant trees. Every individual can plant trees. That's something that's very constructive. You can boycott industries which are irresponsible on global warming and on chlorofluorocarbons. There are many things people can do, but they have to understand the issue before they can do those things. Well, we just... Very good question, and, and uh, if I may say, very nicely put. Um, you can't force people not to have children. I mean, uh, it's inhuman at the most fundamental level, and uh, also it, I think it's very hard to do, uh, except if you're willing to uh, accept totalitarian system. But there is a little known but extremely important fact, and that is that when the per capita income, when the, the amount of money people make goes, gets above a certain very pitifully low level, they voluntarily reduce the population growth. So let me now come back to that, to that uh, issue in a little more detail. As the world population continues to increase exponentially or nearly exponentially, all the sorts of environmental problems we were talking about before get worse because the more people there are, the more fossil fuels get burned, the more greenhouse gases and all the rest of it. The more people there are, the more competition for resources there is, the more human misery, the more likelihood of war. Uh, it's a very serious issue, uh, as are so many of the things we've been talking about on, on this program, all having to do with the growth in our technology. Now, if you ask people in the developing world, that's where the problem is, that's where the greatest growth rate is, why do you have so many kids? Don't you know you can't, you can't support them? The answer you get back is uh, extremely telling. It's something like this. The kids ha require very little financial investment. You don't have to send them to school. Nobody goes out to the store to buy clothes for them. And they're useful. They can gather wood. They can gather water. They can help on the scrabbly farm or whatever, whatever it is. And most important, if you have lots of kids, 
then maybe one of them will survive into adulthood and take care of you in your old age because there's no social security. It's a way, having lots of kids, is a way to ensure the parent's old age. Now, all over the world, East and West, Buddhist and Catholic, former communist and capitalist countries, all over, when the income rises above a certain minimum level, the population growth rate takes a steep dive. Um, and that's because now there is enough to take care of your old age. The only exceptions are countries in which the status of women is uh, so low that they are effectively slaves and have nothing to say about how many children they should have. So, what can we do? We can help raise the standard of living of the billion poorest people on the planet, not by handouts, not by giving them 